Everybody, get everybody a moment to sit down. How y'all doing today? I, I got a, I got a. Forgive me for sitting for most of uh, this time. I, I got a bad leg, so <laughs> I got to rest. You bring up the lights. I don't want you know. They, bad enough, they got to listen to me, but then they don't want them falling asleep at the same time. So. <laughs> Give people an incentive to stay awake. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning again. Welcome to Amaze. My name is Leonard Small. I'd like to thank you all for your first time um, guests here. If you look inside of your church bulletin, there's this, um, there's this blue uh, slip of paper. Um, it's our, um, I mean, not, not blue. It's a white sheet of, sheet of paper. Excuse me. Our, um, we're going to be receiving our offering here in a second. I'm a little discombobulated right now because usually I'm, I'm in the middle of thinking about my sermon while Vic does the announcements. Uh, but I'll pack to Vic Kucha. He's not here. Uh, so uh, we're going to be praying for him today. But inside of your church bulletin, there's this little white slip of paper. If you go ahead and fill it out for us, let us know that you're here so that we can uh, know that, uh, you know, pray for you. If you had any new uh, address changes or anything, uh, let us know. Any prayer requests, that'll be awesome. Um, and where are our ushers? All right, we'll go ahead and call you all up and we'll go ahead and get started. I have a tendency to be a little long-winded, so go ahead and get the sermon over with. <laughs> uh, let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, we just thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for uh, gathering us here today to just marvel at you, Lord. You're so grac gracious and great to us that we can't even put it to words sometimes. Uh, we thank you for Vic. Uh, we pray that you watch over him as uh, him and Roxanne as they're making their way back um, here to Jacksonville. We pray that you give them traveling mercies. Uh, we pray for uh, Emmaus as we are uh, one family on mission. And we just pray that you will give us wisdom on how to use these finances. We are offering up to you for your glory. And we just thank you for all these and many other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, take a moment to look with me inside of a church bulletin. All right. We um, still, if you haven't noticed, we still haven't gotten that side over there fixed. Uh, so we thank you all for being patient with us as we um, uh, they continue to plug along um, in that new building. Um, as soon as that gets finished, we'll start our children's services. Uh, with that being said, we got some classrooms over there. 
that need to be worked on. So uh, if you don't mind, we, we have a work night coming up Wednesday and Thursday night. We have some flooring, some laminate flooring in some classrooms over there. I'm going to read Vic's um, his email, his text real quick. Make sure I don't leave nothing out. Um, but the big thing is, is that it's a six by seven room and it should go by pretty fast. So if you don't mind coming out Wednesday or Thursday night, that'll be awesome. Amen. Hey man, we got water baptisms coming up uh, Sunday, August 23rd at 1.30 p.m. Everybody is invited. Um, if you don't know, baptisms, even though they, they represent um, something, a somber kind of, you know, the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, but it's a celebration. So we ask that you come on out and help celebrate with us, those who are getting baptized. If you are uh, seeking to be publicly identified with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, uh, please uh, let us know by signing up in the foyer. There's a baptism sign-up sheet. Also, uh, Black Tie for Eli, there's a benefit dinner coming up. It's a lot of information in there. There's a flyer out there. But coming up, we we have a uh, spirit night. Wednesday, this Wednesday, August 5th. Five to eight at Chick Fil A in Mandarin, and um, if you know if you don't know the Waterson story, if you're a first time visitor, uh, they have a child who recently passed away, and they um, have a lot of medical expenses and other things. Uh, so if you can come on out and support another part of our family, uh, it's going to be at the Chick Fil A in Mandarin. Twenty percent of the proceeds are going to go to the Watersons family. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What else did I leave out? Uh, we have this Tuesday, the 11th. Uh, if you want to come on out to Trinity Rescue Mission, there will also be a um, you know a great opportunity to serve the least fortunate. Um, you know, uh, there's pretty much a soup kitchen there. If you feel led that God has placed something in your heart, you want to share, you come out and speak during that chapel. It's just a great opportunity to serve. And the Brownings. They're here. Oh, there they are. They are seeking to collect shoes now. It doesn't say it in here. Do they have to be new shoes? I think that probably would help. No, used is fine. Used is fine. So they're trying to raise uh, money to adopt. Let's get them a round of applause for doing that. So uh, we're going to need about 10,000 pairs of shoes. Wow. So that's the go. That's a lofty goal, but we can, we, can, we, can, we can try it. That's why I asked. Use, yeah, if you've got some used ones, just bring them, right? And uh, it's going to help alleviate their financial burden. <clears throat> All right. Man. Now, that is my second bottle of water I've lost. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. See? It, it, like my grandma used to say, if it was a snake, it would bit me. Country, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, today, we're going to continue in the series, Kingdom of God. Come up on the screen. Let's see. Maybe. Yeah. So we're going to continue the series, Kingdom of God, and we've been talking about, um, you know, the, the, the comparison and contrast um, in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this earth. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Not everybody here knows me, right? No, okay. All right. Got some new, new people, right? New people? You want to raise your hand? If you, okay. Got some new people. All right. So, so not everybody here knows me. My name is Leonard Small. Uh, I'm not going to assume, even the people that have been here a couple of times, I'm not going to assume that you know me. Uh, my name is Leonard Small. I am a um, happily married man with uh, my wife of Janice for 16 years. Uh, amen. <laughs> 16 years married to my wife. And uh, I met her shortly after I came into the Navy. This is back in 1997. I came in 95, so this year is my 20 year mark. I'll be getting ready to retire here pretty soon. Amen. Uh, 20 years service in the Navy, um, met her, and we just had some kids, and we, <laughs> what's so funny about that? <laughs> Why do I bring the kids? No, I, I really am. I'm, I, you know, most people, when they think of fun on a Saturday, like one o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night, you know, they think, well, I'll go out and hang out with the fellas. For me, you know, I, I'm blessed. I, I'd rather be at home hanging out with my crew, right? So... I thank God for them. I thank God that I have a, a, a bunch of people, you know, that I get to live with that, you know, just, just you know, they make me laugh. We, 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 we have fun. You know, we play categories. You know, people have been to my house for game nights. We have a good time. So, but overall, family for me is a touchy subject, you know, my extended family. You know, it entails joy, pain, sunshine, and rain. All right, that's a, that's a maze reference for all my old school R&B people out there. <laughs> But uh, family has not always been a, been a happy subject for me. Uh, and, it's, and it's, you know, at the age of six months old, my, my mother abandoned me and my sister. And growing up, we didn't really spend a lot of time with my father. 
So, um, so what does that make me? You know, I'm half black, you know, half Korean, and you know, you say what? You know, a mess, right? I mean, that's just a hodgepodge of different <laughs> genes. That doesn't make me confused, you know? Yeah, possibly. I mean, that's like my general mental state most of the time, confused. <laughs> but. Um, you know, I get, I get asked a lot, you know, like, what are you? And I, you know, I like to say, I'm human, you know. <laughs> just, to, just, just to mess with people. Uh, but the reality is, you know, I get it. You know, you, you see the, the slanted eyes, you see the curly hair, the, the strong African nose, and, and it's, <laughs> and, it, and it throws you off. It confuses you, and, and sometimes I'm confused. And, and, you know, it's not my looks that confuse me, but it's, it's growing up, you know, you know without the, the, the Korean mother around or not my dad around. It's like you don't have this, this sense of what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? So, so for a child that's confusing not knowing what does that mean? What does it mean to be Korean? What does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be a man? Not having that spoken into you. And so the same is in the kingdom of God. When you don't know exactly what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, how can we say that we're part of a kingdom if we don't know our role in it? Amen. It's very dangerous to just assume what it means. I can just assume what it means to be a man. And a lot, I see a lot of young men, that's what they're doing. They, they assume that being a man means more women, more cars, more people, you know, uh, patting me on the back, telling me I'm great. But that's not what it's about. What am I, what am I here for? Not everybody's asking this question. And I'm just going to assume not everybody here is saved, not everybody believes in, in God. And if you don't, this, if you don't, all right, let's say hypothetically you don't believe that there's God. You are on a rock spinning at a thousand miles an hour, shooting through the vast space of the universe at 66,000 miles an hour, circling a ball of fire. Wow. <laughs> Scary, ain't it? <laughs> All right. No, who's in control of this thing, right? <laughs> so if you don't believe that there's a God, I mean, you're just, just hurtling through eternity with no point or reason to life. And that there's this God, and if there's a God who, who has a kingdom, and he, and he tells us what he expects from us or what he designed us for, then I think we should take a moment to examine that. Um, let, us, let us pray before I get started. Uh, dear Lord, before I step into this text and start to um, just un unravel all that you've placed in my heart this week for your people, I just pray that there is less of me and more of you. Uh, I just pray that your people hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and not me. Uh, I just pray that whatever burden that is brought here, whatever you know, sense of doubt and frustration and anger, whatever it is, Lord God, that it is all laid before you right now so that we can receive what the Spirit is saying. Uh, we just thank you for these and many other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, adults, you have been getting preached to all the past few weeks. So kids, do I have any kids out there that want to come up here and help me? We'll do some children's church. Anybody, anybody? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Anybody else? Come on up, come on up, come on, come on. I used to be a youth pastor, so this is like one of my old passions. So I, I like, I, you know, this is not rehearsed, so this is a train wreck ready, ready and happy, so waiting to happen, so we're gonna, gonna, gonna see how this turns out. All right, come on, come on, come on. Come on, kiddos, come on up. All right, crisscross applesauce, make it happen. <laughs> All right. Do I have anybody who's a great reader? You are? What? Come on, man. So, today's lesson is going to be on, we're going to go to John. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. You want to come here and read it? You want to read it up? Yeah. So, everybody pay attention. I'm going to find it for you. You probably know where it is better than I do, right? Mm, no. No? <laughs> okay. So John 15, what's your name, sir? Ephraim. Ephraim? Okay. So we're going to read, this is going to come up on the screen for all you other people that are just watching on our class here. Uh, we're going to read verse, 
One through eight? Let's see. One through eight. All right, go ahead. Right here it says, I am divine. I am the true vein, and my father is the vein vine destroyer. Every branch in me does not bear fruit. He takes away, and every branch may bear bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the world, the word that I have made. Spoken to you, um, abide. Abide. Abide in me and in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vein. Ne- neither can you unless you abide me in me. All right, that's cool. Go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to read the rest. It says, I am divine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is that bears much fruit. Y'all get that? So we're talking about trees. We're talking about fruit. All right, the branch got to be connected to the tree, right? Whoever abides in me and I in him, he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is Jesus talking. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown to the fire and burn. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, and it will be done for you. Ask whatever you wish. I left that part out. That's very important, right? Who likes wishes? Who likes wishes? If you had wishes, what would you wish for? Anybody? What would you wish for? Money? What? What would you like? What would you wish for? I wish for a puppy. A puppy? <laughs> Mom and dad? Puppy? What would, you, what would you wish for? A Lamborghini. A Lamborghini? <laughs> uh, that's a big wish. What about you? Um, I wish for a puppy. A puppy. Okay, another a whole, whole bunch of puppies. All right. So if anybody has a litter of puppies, let these kids know. I'd wish for a rabbit. A rabbit? A driver's license? <laughs> uh, by this, my father is glorified that if, if y'all get the puppies and the Lamborghini, God will be glorified so you bear much fruit. All right. So, so prove to be his disciples. All right. So we, we're talking about trees and fruit and stuff. And I, 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 so if I were to tell you that, that this, let's see, this is, this is an apple tree. Uh oh, oh, my apple tree, I lost my fruit. All right, let's just say that hooked up to here if, is my fruit. If, if, if you took, if, if you came and eat this, uh, thing that it will feed you? Do you think so? Okay, if you took this home and put it on your bed, you come back, would there be more apples on it? Why not? Why? I don't know, because that's a pole. That's a pole? Okay, that works. Yeah, that's true. Uh, anybody else? Why won't, it, why won't fruit come off of it? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't give you the stick to talk to. Um, because the tree is where the fruit... Needs to be connected to the tree, right? Yeah. Yep. Anybody else? All right, so it needs to be connected to the tree, right? Why does it need to be connected to the tree? Anybody, oh, you, uh, you, I didn't miss you last time. Because if it's not connected to the tree, then I don't know. Then you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so if this is just a pole, and I'm losing my mic. So this is just a pole. What, what if I hooked it up to this real tree branch? Put this thing on here, and if it's a real tree branch, would that would that help? No. Yeah. No. 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 Yes. 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 Maybe. Possibly. Yes. Why not? Because it's not hooked up to the root, which gives it water. And you need a root. Yeah. Why do you need a root? <laughs> so a branch by itself can't do anything, right? No. So 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 what is, what do you think it means when it says that Jesus is the true vine? What does that mean? That he wants us to do what? He wants if we're the branches. What he wants us to do? He wants us to. He wants to grow the that tree to grow. Amen. All right. So, fruit of the spirit, Galatians five. Let's see how well you all know how to read these words. All right. The fruit of the spirit, Galatians five. What is it? What's this word? Goodness. Goodness. All right. What's this word? Kindness. Kindness. All right. What's this one? Patience. 
patience, it's in script, but I've got some smart kids here. <laughs> this word right here? Peace. Peace. All right. Keep all this in mind. This is not all separate things. This is all, you're supposed to be doing all this at one time, okay? So peace. What's the next one? Joy. Supposed to have joy. Love. Love. We all know what love is. All right. Nobody. Good stuff. Don't need to. Um, faithfulness. All right. And I think this should be the last one. Goodness. All right. We did that over here. So twice. All right. So if we go back and look at that scripture, um, it says, abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless, it's abide, unless it abides in the vine. Next, ver next one. Neither can you unless you abide in me, you are the branches, or abide to me and I him. He it is that bears much fruit for apart from me, and you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. I cut that branch off, I think, three or four days ago, and it's already getting dry and it's starting to crack up. So it needs to be, you know, destroyed, right? All right. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, verse 8, it says, ask what you wish. Remember we talked about wishes? All right. It'll be done for you. By this, my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Now, what's the focus? Is it wishes or fruit? Does God want us to have wishes or do he want us to be fruitful? Fruitful, right? All right. So if it says abide in his word. So let's, let's take something simple like it says obey your parents. Who obeys their parents? Who's telling the truth? <laughs> Not so many, right? Okay. So... You want the wishes, but you, you hear the scripture that says, children, obey your parents and honor them, right? That's hard, right? Your parents are not easy to obey all the time, right? Right? I didn't, I didn't make this up, y'all. Excuse me. <laughs> so it is not easy being connected to Jesus than we thought, right? So what do we have to pray for? We have to pray for times when we're not what? Loving, right? Pray for times when we're not being joyful, right? And if you do those things, what would it make you? If you do and if you obey God's word, what would it make you? Fruitful? Say it with me. Fruitful. Amen. All right. Give them a round of applause, y'all. Y'all go ahead and have a seat. Woo. Thank y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for reading for me, Ephraim. Amen. Boy. Kids say the darndest things, don't they? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I do. I really do miss, um, miss hanging out with them. And I have a tendency to be a little immature anyway, so it kind of feeds that, <laughs> that, that uh, immature tendency in me. So uh, God wants us to be fruitful, and this is not designed for moving around. Give me one second. We're sloppy around here. I know. I'm sorry. All right, so, so God wants us to be fruitful, but what does fruitfulness have to do with his kingdom? All right, so we got God, we got us, we got fruit. Now, how does it all, what does it all have to do with his kingdom? Let's, let's turn to Mark chapter 4. And before we get there, if you use your app or turn pages, before you get there, let me just set the scene for you. Uh, so Jesus, in uh, the previous chapter, he's like reaching the height of his ministry uh, people are hearing that he's doing great things, and they're, they're excited, you know, there's like, there's this guy, he could be the Messiah. I mean, we need to go see him. There's miracles, he's saying things that only the Messiah can say, and, and Jesus, you know, he, he's, he's being followed. Now a crowd is starting to gather, people are starting to go where he goes, they want to hear, and they want to see it, it was getting so bad. I mean, the crowds were getting so bad. Uh, Jesus was like, uh, you know, uh, disciples, this is in chapter 3. He was like, hey, uh, go get a getaway boat because these people, you know, they tripping. Well, he didn't say they were tripping, but he did say like, hey, they, 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 it was getting so frantic. He said they were going to crush him. Now, I want, now, just think about it. You, you know, just use your imagination. If you were like in Walmart, Black Friday, standing by the $99 flat screens. All right? That's scary, right? So this is the kind of ridiculous craziness that's getting ready to happen. And Jesus is like, hey, go get, get me a, 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 you know, get a boat so, you know, the crowds won't crush me. And here we look at verse 4. You know, Jesus, even though the crowds come, 
He doesn't leave on the boat. He does something a little different. Let us look. Verses 1 through 9. And he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat on it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed. And he sowed. Some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and yielded no grain. And other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty-fold and sixty-fold and a hundred-fold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So, so when, when we get this option of, you know, if we had notoriety and fame and people start coming to us and start lifting us up, the first thing we try to do, we try to protect that. We, we actually want the attention. We want the crowds. We want the applause. We want, we want people, all eyes on us, all ears on us. But this is not what Jesus does. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him, let him hear. And I, I would imagine those who were there were like, you know, dude, I'm, I'm actually listening to you. Like, you don't have to tell me. Like, I am listening. He was saying one thing, but they came for, they didn't come for that. They didn't come to hear that parable. You know, I, I equate that to like, you know, like, you know, you, 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 you got your, you know, you spray, you know, if you were a child of the 80s like me, you know, you went and got your jerry curl all juiced up. You, uh, you know, you, you, you teased your, your bang. For, for those, like you did all, you got, you got yourself ready, you know, you, you're going to see Michael Jackson at the Soul Train uh, Music Awards in 1986, and, and, and you're getting yourself ready, and you know, you're in the crowd, you're like, Billy Jean, Billy Jean. <laughs> and instead of him doing a moonwalk, he starts quoting Shakespeare. And you're sitting there, it's like, okay, this is not why I came. Much like the way y'all look at me, like, yeah, I came to hear Vic, not Leonard. <laughs> and, uh, and so after a while, look, look at the next verse. This is what happens. Verse 10, it says, and when, and when he was alone. That's what happens. When, when you don't get what you want, you start to leave, right? You don't, you don't want to hang out. You, you came for one thing. Something else happened. It's not fun. So Jesus, who was once crushed by crowds, is now alone. And with the twelve, ask about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been, been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables. So they may indeed see, but not perceive. May indeed hear, but not understand. At least it should turn and be forgiven. And so to me, I love what this looks, you know, when, with this picture he's painting. It's like those who are really my disciples, those who are really close to me, those who really want to know, they will hang out. You know, I said, not too long, my last sermon, I said, you know, we, 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 we embrace what people say to us in three different ways. Either we give it no value, some value, or true value. And I said when it comes to true value, that you, you, you take into account who's giving you the command. Who's telling you what they want you to do. You may not like what they have to say, but you do it because they love you. All right? you, you obey, you, and you sit, and you listen because you, you just can't go off of what they're saying. You, you have to include the person who's saying it. So when it comes to Jesus giving his parable, his disciples could have been like, you know what, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't want to go through this. I, don't want to, I didn't come to sit and listen to parables. I came for the signs, miracles, and wonders. I came for the Messiah. But the true disciples, they stayed. So when it comes to listening to sermons or whether you go home to read your Bible, whether God sends somebody to speak a word to you, we have to decide when they say whatever they say in the name of the Lord, what is our response? What is going to be the fruit? What, what, what's going to happen once we, once we hear it? This is the direction we're going in. This is the direction of Jesus' this, 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 this sermon, this teaching he's about to give his disciples. And, 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 you know, if, 
There, there's something about God's word, obedience, and, and salvation that we tend to forget. Let's look at James chapter 1, verse 19 through 21. It says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. All right? There's, there's this connection between God's word, our heart, and what comes out of our heart. Okay? Mark 14, 13, and 15. It says, And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones al along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. All right. So now, traditionally, in, in Christian tradition, we say there are three enemies of our soul. All right. Say it with me. Satan. 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 The world. The world. And our flesh. All right, the world is kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of ambiguous, but just think of the world not meaning uh, just rooms, uh, you know, just ten it's the world system, all right? How the world oppresses us, all right? Those are the three enemies of our soul. The first one is Satan. So it says, the word is sown, and immediately Satan comes in and swoops it up. Now, if you don't know Satan, I mean, he, the Bible talks about him. It says he's one of the most beautiful beings God ever created. When God created him, he created him, he was like, like gold and jewels, and he was like the leader of worship in heaven. I mean, the dude was serious. And so Satan, looking at how lofty God had made him, how beautiful he was, he said, you know what? I'm going to take over. I want to be God. I want to I wanna rule. I want to reign. I want everybody to worship me. That is what makes Satan the father of lies, because that's the big, biggest lie that was ever told. So convincing Satan was that he took a third of the host with him, a third of the angels. So lying is his thing. So the, the Bible, you know, it equates him in verse 4 to a bird that comes in and quickly swoops up and takes the word. So what, what does that mean we need to do? Does that mean we need to, uh, uh, we need more seed, right? We need more Bible study. I need to go to a lifeway, get more books. I need to start memorizing more scripture. No, uh, it says, and in, 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 in the Bible says that you should resist the devil and he will flee. All right? That's what it says, right? Now, do, you, do we need some eight-week Bible study to figure it out? Do we need a, a, a sermon series? Do we need to sit here for the next hour and talk about what resisting Satan looks like? Anybody want to do that? Raise your hand. Nope. Okay. Nobody. I can do it for you in five seconds. All right? This is how you're going to fix it. Resist Satan the way you resist God. All right? Now, everybody has, has experienced this before. All right? The way God speaks to you when he tells you to go ask somebody for forgiveness, the way God tells you when you get too much change through that drive through window, he's like, give it back. And you're like, no, Lord, I need that. Or I want that. You may not even need it. The way God tells you to go ask that person for forgiveness but you're like, no, I, I don't think I will. We are experts at resisting God. It is natural. We don't need to be taught how to do it. Our hearts are naturally rebellious. We don't, have, we don't need, nobody needs, you know, you, you don't, case in point, children. All right? I don't think there was ever any reason why I gave my kids, you know, uh, uh, you know to, gave them the, the, the uh, 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 reason just to say no to me. And they would say no to me, and they, 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 even under, they couldn't even tie their own shoes. They couldn't even wipe their own butts, and they understood the word no. They understood rebellion. They understood falling down because and, and, they didn't get what they want. They understood resisting authority. You already know how to resist authority. I'm just telling you to switch that towards resisting Satan. Satan. Amen? Mark 4, 16 through 17. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately, immediately they fall away. 
Um, I was struggling with this one for a little while because I was like, man, you know, how do I illustrate this one? Planned Parenthood is in the news, so I'm going to just use abortion as a, as a way to illustrate this. So, so just hypothetical, not, not real, just hypothetical. You know, there's a church you go to, you come in, you sit down, and, and this pastor starts to preach, right? Just an illustration. And this pastor preaches on how God created man in his image and in his likeness. Because man is created in his image, this gives all humans value. We are created in the image of God. And since we're all created in the image of God, and there's this, you know, uh, uh, we can't look at anyone no matter what their outside exterior looks like. We ought to value every soul because of his image on them. And then this pastor would go on and, 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 and talk about the, 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 the horrendous ways that there are 3,000 souls murdered each day. He'll talk about how the greatest genocide known to man has taken place where in the African community there have been more um, it, it, you, know, you, you know, you take AIDS, cancer, diabetes, gun violence, um, um, any, any unnatural, natural or unnatural death, and abortion is greater than all those things combined. And then this pastor's heart will get heavy as he, as he hears the news of young bodies that are being mutilated, torn apart, and sold. But then he'll, 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 he'll talk about a savior who takes that young lady and lets her know that she's forgiven. He takes that young man who valued his life over the life of an of a, of a, of a unborn child, and he embraces that person and tells him, you're forgiven. That there's a real savior who will save you from the guilt and the shame of your decision. And then they'll all rejoice because there's a God who would take broken and flawed people who may have made some bad decisions in life and tell them and look at them and say, man, there's grace. Amen? There's grace. There's grace and forgiveness even in the unforgivable. And, they, and, we, and that church would rejoice. That church would rejoice at the idea that the unborn who have uh, uh, with, uh, with, with eyes that have never seen the light of day, they will see the beauty and glory of Jesus for the first time. And that first breath that they take on the other side of eternity will be in heaven. And that with feet that never touch the ground, they will walk on streets of gold. That should bring joy to your heart. We're just using this as an illustration. I want, this church, we wouldn't say that, right? So, you, you walk away from the church, you joy, feel like, yeah, man, God is, he's gracious, he's great, he's glorious. And then you get home, and then you really start to think about it. You're like, what about women's rights? Man don't have a right to tell a woman what to do with her body. You know, you know if, 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 if the Mars rover, this is just a side note, all right? If the Mars rover ran across that on the planet, it wouldn't look at it, the camera wouldn't zoom in and say, oh, look at that, that's a choice. No, they would say, that's life, okay? All right? Side note, all right? Forget that even happened. <laughs> you hear it's a choice, how dare you tell a woman what to do to her body, and, and, and how dare you uh, uh, be so insensitive to a woman's suffering, how, how dare you put this burden, uh, and, and so the cares of the world. All right, all this joy that you had, when you thought about God, Imago Day, you know, the image of God, you thought about how wonderful it was that God would forgive, and all of that was quickly taken away because you had this con conflicting ideologies. You had the Word of God that declares one thing, and then you had what you felt was right. Look at me in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. It says in, in verse 24 through 27, 
Just say, before, before I get into that, just think about it. Just think about thorns. Just think about the cares of the world. No, 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 I haven't gotten there yet. So, so you, you think about the, the, the thin, you got rock and you have this thin layer of soil. You know, it looks, it looks like it could take a seed and grow it. It looks like it can grow. But under that thin veneer, like if you, you brush away the, 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 that, that thin layer of dirt, that you'll see that it's rock. And, and so that's what religion does. Religion gives the appearance that you could possibly take seed. You look like you could play the part. You look like you could be fruitful. But look at Ezekiel 36, verse 24 through 27. It says, I will take from, you, from the nations and gather from you all, from all the countries, and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, and I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey the rules. Okay, I just probably sounded like I butchered that up. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, some of you are living in sin that, that's maybe not as evil as you would probably think abortion is. Some of you probably be doing, you know, you're probably doing something just as simple as just being selfish. Maybe just not loving. Whatever that sin is, let, let, let's just say we, we need to just pray. All right, we're going to pray for you. But as we pray for you, I'm asking that you pray for yourself, that God would take that heart of stone that could have easily received the word of God that was able to be implanted and save your soul, that that heart of stone would stop rejecting the word of God and start receiving it. Amen? Amen. You should start receiving it, and there should be fruit. And if God is to, cha to change your heart, we're going to ask that, he, he, that when you change, you're, you're not changed and you're going to go into this half-hearted, halfway doing it, one foot in, one foot out. I'm going to pray that you go in guns a-blazing. God is not looking for half-hearted obedience, ground that may or may not yield fruit. He wants hearts of stone turned flesh. He wants you to feel. He wants you to experience his goodness. He wants you to understand the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross so that there could be some fruit from your life. Amen? And if you are to change your heart from stone to flesh, uh, let me just warn you that there will be no greater joy in your life than obeying God. Amen? Amen? Mark 4, 18 and 19, or actually 18 through 20. It says, And others are sown amongst thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. All right. I'm going to make some people uncomfortable. You may want to walk out and leave, all right? I'm going to say some phrases. I'm not going to explain. I'm not going to give any kind of back monologue. I'm just going to say some things. And I just want you to just take a moment to just think about what's going on inside your heart. All right? I'm not going to tell you it's right or wrong. I'm just telling you to sit and just ponder. Okay? All right. The elections are coming up. And who are you voting for? Boy, I really, those, those Republicans, they just don't get it. Or what are those darn Democrats, man? They're going to destroy this nation. All right, no, no, no replies. Just, just think about what's going on inside here. All those darn conservatives, them darn liberals, man. They're our enemy. They're going to they're gonna kill us. They're going to rob us. What if, what if they don't like me? What if I go in there and, and nobody thinks I'm cute? She's so beautiful. I'm not. Everybody hates me. Man, if I just get to go on vacation, I'll be happy. I can finally have some peace. I can have rest. Finally get all that stuff I wanted. Man, if I won a million dollars, life would be just perfect. Look at those two. They're so in love. They make me sick. 
No, I'll do this right here. <laughs> they make me sick, man. I'm stuck with this trash over here. Man, if, if I can just get my kids to, to, to you know, to, to, to work out harder, to get in this for it, that's for it, man, maybe they can get a scholarship, and then I don't have to worry about this, worry about, I get them to do this and do that, and volunteer here, volunteer there, because I hate when they brag on their kids. I'm tired of it. I want to brag on my kids every once in a while. Now, let, let me say this. Politics, appearances, uh, raising children, money, none of those things within themselves are sinful, okay? Just let me say that. They're not sinful. Facebook, TV, music, none of those things are sinful. All right, how can I, how can I verify? Well, what, what are we talking about then? What's, what's going on inside your heart? Okay, so in the Old Testament, Moses takes the children of Israel out of Israel, I mean out of Egypt. They leave with gold and jewels, a lot of, you know, animals, they, they leave with a lot. Moses takes too much time with God. And they're like, man, we're getting tired of waiting on Moses. Let's make a calf. So they take, the, you know, let's make us an idol. So they take the gold, they take the earrings, they melt it all down. Aaron says, hey, the people are acting up, I'm going to go ahead and make this horn. Aaron makes a golden calf. And they worship it. All right. There is nothing evil about gold. There's nothing evil about the image of a calf. The evil was what was going on inside their heart. See, all of us have the potential to receive God's word and be fruitful, but there's something growing in its place. That's the thing about thorns. See, there's nothing wrong with the ground. The ground is going to do what the ground is going to do. Something's going to grow. But what if the wrong thing is growing? What if that anger towards how somebody else is getting blessed and you're not? What about that, 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 that frustration that your life is not what you thought it should be? How can the Word of God sink in and change you? How can you bear fruit if there's already something there? So when we talk about idolatry, it doesn't necessarily have to be a golden calf. It could be my looks. It can be my aspirations. It can be my goals. The Word of God cannot take root because there's already something growing. We'll go ahead and call up the man. And verse 20 says this, Levi. It says, but those who are sown on good ground are ones who hear the word accepted and bear fruit 30 and 60 fold and 100 fold. Now, this is the thing about fruit. Fruit is not for the tree or the branch. The fruit is for the hungry and the barren. You need a seed. We all have seed. That's why God ultimately, he just doesn't want us to bear fruit so we can say, hey, look at me, I'm a pretty apple tree. No, he wants you to feed the hungry. He wants you to give seed to those who are barren, which is to reproduce yourself, to make more disciples. Amen? And I'm going to close in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9. And we're going to go to the King James Version. Did you get it? Man, check that out. We're going old school. And it says this in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9. It says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. I love that. It's just so poetic to me. I grew up reading King James, so it really speaks to my heart. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. That means field. We're all his, we're his garden. All right? We're all God's building. Let's go ahead and stand up and pray. People of God, this is bigger than just God wanting to change you, just make you something that you don't want to be. Uh, this is bigger than, uh, um, um, you know, you just acting apart. God wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to look like his disciples. Let us pray. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for grace. 
And, and we're not just talking about grace that forgives us because of what we've done in the past, but grace that allows us to fall forward. You're calling us to do something we've probably never done before, have faith in areas that we probably never had faith in before, and that as we try to be people who are not just hearing your word, but are responding appropriately, that are bearing spiritual fruit, we pray that we don't fall back into our old sin. We pray that we don't continue to doubt who you are. We pray that as we seek to serve you and to, and to live a life that is pleasing to you, that we fall forward. And then if we fall, and in falling forward, Lord, give us the strength and the courage to get back up. There is a world famished, hungry, and Lord, there are no, there's no other options. We have the fruit, Lord. Let us have this courage to go out and, and give it all away. And we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, people of journey 
Uh, let us go forth this week. So seed, there's a world starving, and they need a savior. Let us have the courage to go out and be that for them. Jesus is sending you as seed carriers, as fruit for the hungry. And if you're filled with his spirit, water for the thirsty. Amen? Amen. Have a great week and God bless. God bless. <laughs> I had to drive it all by myself. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to drive it all by myself. It's a little scary. With the melody